Hey guys, it's Christy and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we have a bit of a judgy video. We're going to be talking about the weirdest makeup releases of 2021 because there's been a lot. So before I get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's get into it. Okay, so there's been some strange releases this year um, from weird packaging to just plain ridiculous. So the very first one I wanted to mention was one that came out back in January. So all the way back to January. And this was a MAC collab. This is not the only MAC collab we have to talk about today. Um, but the first one is The Sims. So this palette was just a regular MAC nine pan eyeshadow palette. But what made it a Sims collab is that it was in a blue box that said MAC X Sims. That was it. Otherwise, it was literally just a plain MAC palette. And I don't think anybody understood the purpose uh, behind this product. I don't think anybody actually understood the whole collaboration. It was just something that was so strange and felt like they just kind of threw it together at the last second and said, hey, we're doing a collab. Okay. Like, that was one of those moments where it was like, okay, Mac, you need to, you need to figure your stuff out. But they didn't leave it there. They came out with another collaboration this year, and that is Mac and Cruella. So historically, some of Mac's collaborations are so beautiful. Their Selena collabs, stunning. So, so, so beautiful. Um, they just did one with Rosalia, beautiful. But the Mac and Cruella was some of the worst I have ever seen. Like the palette was so, I hate to say this, but the palette was so ugly that it actually made me feel annoyed. Like it just, it made no sense. It was chaotic and not in a good way. Like if you think, if you think to the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette, the color story was chaotic, but everything else was still very Natasha Denona. The MAC and Cruella palette was just, it made no sense. It made no sense. The layout was a mess. The color story didn't make sense. There was so much wasted space in the palette and I don't even know if you can purchase it anymore because I really don't think it went over well with anybody. Okay, going on to a fairly recent collab and this is Revolution X Friends. This is probably like their third or fourth collab. And I believe this is part of their holiday collection. So Revolution has so many um, subsidiary brands and is it's kind of weird and it's hard to keep track of all of them but they've also done so many collaborations with friends and i'm a huge friends fan i love friends so much i did pick up the first collab and i was kind of disappointed with the quality so i really haven't picked up anything since but then there was the most recently their friends holiday sort of collection which kind of got my attention, but there was this one palette and it is an eyeshadow palette and it's a giant palette and it is shaped like an uncooked turkey. If you have seen Friends, you know exactly the episode um, that's coming from and it's a really funny episode and I can kind of understand the theme, but who on earth is buying an eyeshadow palette shaped like an uncooked turkey? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just not. It's First of all, it's it's weird. It is um, bulky. It's an awkward shape to store. Like, I don't know. And as somebody who is a hardcore Friends fan, I'm not even buying that. I'm not even buying that to display. It was just odd, okay? It was just odd. Let's pick on Morphe for a minute because they came out with the Cherry Coke collection. And what was weird about this collection is not the collaboration. They've done several Coke themed collections so far and they're fine. What's weird about this collection was the way the palette was a direct copy of the Too Faced um, palettes in the tin packaging. So like the Sweet Peach palette, the Pumpkin Spice palette, the new cinnamon roll palette it's not like copying 
um, a design or anything. It's literally that packaging that is very well known to be Too Faced packaging, um, especially for their holiday palettes. It is literally copying that. Morphe is known for their big, awkward palettes or like the cardboard packaging, kind of like um, ColourPop. They're known for those types of shapes. But this one was literally a tin package just like Too Faced and it just seemed weird to me. It kind of, I don't know, something about it just threw me off. I absolutely thought it was a Too Faced palette when I first saw it, but I don't know. It just wasn't my favorite. Another very weird collab was the Ulta and Gilmore Girls collab. So Ulta released a series of products based around Gilmore Girls. Yeah, I don't think this one went over it that well either, but there was two quads, one for Rory, one for Lorelai. Um, I believe there may have been a couple of setting mists. I think there was some lip glosses. Uh, there's a nail set, a gel liner set, a brush and sponge set, a lip crayon set. I didn't try any of the products myself, so I can't say that, but I did watch reviews of the quads and the eyeshadows apparently had like no pigment and I don't know. I just feel like it was so lackluster. Gilmore Girls is another show that I am diehard obsessed with and so it just kind of made me sad that they kind of missed the opportunity for this one. On one hand, the packaging looked really cute. The headband, the the scrunchie from Chilton, those look beautiful. The coloring of everything looked looked really good. It's just, I feel like the collection in general was very lackluster. It really didn't get a lot of a lot of hype. And I feel like there could have been much better marketing given that Gilmore Girls has such a huge fan base. I just feel like it could have been I feel like it could have been something and it wasn't. So that was kind of unfortunate. Let's go, let's switch to Fenty for a minute. Fenty released, I believe this is another one that came out back near the beginning of the year. Fenty released their gloss bomb in Fussy in a clip. So you were to like clip it on your clothing somewhere, your car, clip it wherever, and then you would stick your fingers in and put on your gloss. Okay, first of all, on one hand, I see the idea behind it, kind of. I definitely see the Y2K thing coming out. I do see that, but in 2021, we just finished suffering through 2020, and a lot of that's still carrying over to 2021, and we're all washing our hands like crazy people, and we're still really afraid of germs in general. And now you want us to stick our fingers in our lip glosses and put it on? No. Um, but additionally, that's just messy. I don't want to stick my fingers in my lip gloss. I want my lip gloss in an applicator. A lip gloss is sticky enough. And I I really don't know whenever I have clipped a lip gloss to my person when I'm out and about doing my day. I don't know. I just think it's weird. I thought it didn't make sense. I don't even know if you can get it anymore. Hopefully not because, well, it was just a weird product. Okay. Hot Topic also had a very strange release this year. I feel like Hot Topic releases a lot of really random makeup, but they did a collab with Blockbuster. So. The palette literally looked like a blockbuster movie rental from back in the day. So on one hand, the nostalgia of it was really cute and it definitely made you think like, you know, early 2000s, Friday night, go to blockbuster, um, rent a movie, that was the thing. And that's great. But who asked for that? It was just such a weird, random release. So that was definitely in the category of things that make you go, huh? So it was definitely in the weirder range of things that 2021 has brought us. All right, two more products. So first, Hourglass. They released some eyeshadows, and I believe this is the first launch of eyeshadows Hourglass has come out with. And they were ridiculously expensive. They're still available. Um, I imagine they're part of their permanent line. They are ridiculous ridiculously expensive and if I understand correctly you buy each shadow and then you have to buy the palette and from reviews I've seen the formula is nice but it's nothing special so a brand who doesn't make eyeshadows 
or who hasn't historically made eyeshadows, comes out and releases $30 single shadows, and then you have to buy the palette to put it in. I don't know, I just, I absolutely did not purchase that product. I'm very glad I didn't purchase that product, and it was just weird. Okay, finally, 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 not so much a makeup product, but a makeup device. This was from YSL. I think this may have been available for sale in September. I think we all forgot about it after it was initially kind of announced. Um, this was a product, it was like this device where you would buy lipsticks, colors, and you would put it in this device and the device would mix your perfect shade. I thought about getting this just for review purposes, but it was over $200 to purchase this lipstick product that is so extra. I I couldn't in good conscience purchase something like that, but it was definitely a very interesting product. It was very weird. It got people talking. So it had to make this list, absolutely. But that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I. I had a lot of fun making this one, so I really hope you enjoyed. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week, and that is it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!